friends, just yesterday my friends over at the DipNet posted on Facebook a poll about pulling crawler harnesses in the Detroit River. And according to that poll, a bunch of you wanted an instructional video on how to pull crawler harnesses in the Detroit River. And while I have shot a couple of videos in the past on crawler harnesses in the river, I don't know that I've shot one that in detail gave instructions on how to do it. Today my buddy Mike and I are going to shoot an instructional video on pulling crawler harnesses in the Detroit River. FYI it works pretty well in the St. Clair River too. Pretty much everything we'll talk about in this video is also applicable in the St. Clair River. The St. Clair River is relatively about the same speed as the Detroit River, a little bit better water, a little bit better water clarity much of the time, but these same principles will apply to the Detroit River as well as the St. Clair River. Welcome to Team Jesus Outdoors. I hope this video helps. Yeah, that looks better. That looks like maybe a walleye. Well, I noticed you, you and your friend, you guys didn't even get net your own fish for each other. Well, sometimes. Okay. But sometimes you hate to stop fishing when you know you're in them. Well, I just marked a waypoint on that. Okay. What I have found over the years is that a lot of guys are intimidated to try something new. How do I get started? What equipment do I need? Let me tell you, pulling crawler harnesses in the Detroit River is just about the most simple way that you can catch walleye. You will probably not have to go out and buy a bunch of new equipment. In fact, you'll probably spend very little in new equipment. Yet it's an ultra effective and ultra efficient way to put walleye in the boat. As far as gear goes, my preference is simple. Now I know a lot of guys, a lot of guys pull bottom bouncers with a spinning rod and that's just fine. That'll do the trick. If you're going to use a spinning rod, you want a medium or a medium heavy spinning rod. But you definitely still want something with a little bit of a tip to it. You don't want a real stiff rod for this technique. If you use a rod for this technique that's too stiff, you'll wind up pulling hooks out of the fish's mouth and you'll pull the bait away from the fish. But if you don't have bait cast gear, you can get by with spinning gear. However, my preference is bait cast gear. My preference is a bait cast rod, typically a medium bait cast rod. You want a rod that has a little bit of tip to it, a little bit of forgiveness in the tip but yet with enough backbone to handle a two and a half ounce or a three ounce bottom bouncer. I have just an old round bait cast reel. Just about any bait cast reel will work. You don't need a high speed reel. This is a, I think this is a, this is a five two to one round old Gander Guide series reel. I've got it spooled with 12 pound mono you can use 12 pound mono, 12 pound copolymer. I would not use braid for this technique. If you use braid, you'll definitely want to use a mono leader. But you could use fluorocarbon for this technique also. All right, well, I'm going to stick with that two and a half because that seemed to work well on the last pass. Okay. This number five blade seemed to work better than that number four blade. <coughs> Here I'm on bottom. Got my line coming off at a nice 45 degree angle. I got another blue one. I, I'll sell for like ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> if this is a walleye. I thought they all went to Erie. There's fish there's in this. Not any, there's not any. It's supposed to be left in the river now. There's fish in this river all summer. This river holds a resident population of walleye. And you pretty are there much. Any big ones or just these kind? You think? Well, that first one. I, caught. I think big fish are pretty hard to come by this time of year. Yeah. Hey, but you, great. But you have the river all to yourself. Yes. 
other gear you're going to need is pretty minimal. I have everything that I need for pulling chrono harnesses in this one tray. You're going to want a crawler harness. I prefer crawler harnesses with Colorado blades in a size 5 or a size 6. Occasionally I'll use a size 4. And you're going to want some pretty heavy bottom bouncers. I either run a two and a half ounce bottom bouncer or I run a three ounce bottom bouncer. That's it, two and a half or a three ounce bottom bouncer and a handful of crawler harnesses, a couple dozen night crawlers and you're good to go. You could tie your line directly to your bottom bouncer but I find that it's very helpful to tie on a snap swivel. It is definitely pretty handy to use a good ball bearing snap swivel at the end of your line. You will attach your snap swivel to the eye of your bottom bouncer and then off the end of the arm you'll attach your crawler harness. Pretty simple. Another fish? Yeah. I kept debating whether I was going to switch out the night car because it was only about three quarters of the way there. Is it a wall? Yep, it's a little wall. We'll take that one. Did you keep that first one or did you throw it back? Oh, I'm going to keep the walleye. Okay, okay. The easiest method of pulling crawler harnesses is to troll downstream or with the current. So you simply point your trolling motor head downstream, use the trolling motor to keep your correct speed and to keep your direction. Two and a half mile an hour is generally what I'm trying to run. Okay. Because remember the current alone will take you a One mile, five. a mile five, a mile seven. Okay. And maybe not today because of the south wind, but oh, two to three mile an hour somewhere in there is generally good. If you kick the trolling motor down one notch, would you have trouble holding course? I'm a little bit off of a 45 degree angle. Oh, you're saying 45, you're lying down to the bottom. Yes. I'm a little closer probably to a 60 degree. Yeah, I'm almost perfectly at a 45 right now. That's So you're bumping it up to what, 2.3, 2.4? I'm at 2.3 right now. And still maintaining right around two mile an hour? I'm sorry, I'm at three and a half on my prop, and I'm at two, three, two, four on speed. Okay, okay. Yeah, and our lines are still off at a pretty fair angle. I kind of like knowing that I'm really close to the bottom. It seems like I, several of those fish, as soon as I bounced it off the bottom and brought it up, they were, that's when they hit. Right at the bottom, yeah. That's not a walleye, is it? It is. Oh wow, yeah it is a nice. Ah. See, my, now my blade's not turning very well right now. I'd pick up just a little bit if we could. Okay. It says four, but... Whatever adjustment you just made has my blade turning much better. But boom, 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 right? Yeah, it's hard to train your mind to remember. Don't jerk it. <laughs> Just the opposite. Give them the rod tip. Okay. Is that typically a walleye bite where it would go boom, boom, boom like that? Yeah. Or a white perch. White perch feel a lot like a bluegill. Wow, look at all those mayflies. Yeah, we had a good sized mayfly hatch this week. Nasty. So I want to hook this thing as close to the tip of the nose as I can hook it on that first hook, on the upper hook. And then I want the back hook right around that egg sac or just below it.
fairly straight. Now this bigger blade seems to be turning a little bit better than that small blade turn. Okay, and my blade I'm using is pretty You're big. You're running the better, the bigger blade too. Yeah. It's here, oh, there. Yeah. Again, I don't fish right on the bottom. I When I hit bottom, I reel up about yeah. a turn or a turn yeah. and a half. I, I can feel, what I do though, sometimes I bounce, I hear, feel the bottom, I pull it up yeah, a little bit. I will do that also. Okay. Or I'll even, I'll even hit my, I'll even free spool, go back to the bottom. You can tell when it drops though, you gotta let then, out some more line. And then there. raise it again. I okay. Got yeah, I'm lucky I didn't lose them. My drag was set too loose. Oh, look at that. What's that? He's got the front hook in his mouth. That's he good. was He was after that one. Yeah, I'm lucky I did not lose that fish. But yeah, the beautiful thing is you can do this all summer long until, until the boat traffic just starts to drive you crazy. You know? I was pretty confident we'd get a limit. Yeah, those are good sized fish. Yeah, both the ones that were kind of small size. So would that take us just under three hours? Yeah, at 7.15 we had... Had our 10? Okay. Hey, just like a lot of anglers are a little bit intimidated by the unknown, I find that the reason that a lot of guys do not pursue a relationship with God is because it's completely foreign to them. One thing that I will guarantee you is that the promises that God makes in His Word, the Holy Bible, are always true and He always keeps them. Let me read you one of my favorite promises, which is a prophecy that God gave to the prophet Jeremiah. That Jeremiah 29.11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Friends, God is true to his promises all the time, every time. Believe me when I say God created all of us with an innate desire to fellowship with him. I don't want to call it fact because I can't prove it, but I can assure you that I've tested this. I believe this with all of my heart. I've studied this my entire adult life. God created every man, woman, boy, and girl with an innate desire to fellowship with him. I believe this I believe this is why we see a lot of young people especially in their early adult years do crazy things, chase after crazy things trying to fill a void in their life. Guys that are adrenaline junkies, people that get hooked on uh, addictive substances. A lot of these things are just an attempt to fill the void in your life that exists when you do not have God in your life. Guys, Team Jesus Outdoors exists for the primary purpose to share the good news of Jesus Christ. If there are spiritual questions that we can answer for you, if we can help you searching for your faith, if we can pray for you, I wanna encourage you to reach out to us. In the description below this video, I will leave my email address. If you have a desire for someone to pray with you, if you have a desire for someone to help you answer spiritual questions, feel free to leave me an email. I get back to 100% of my emails. It would be my pleasure to help you guys. Hey friends, if you have any questions or comments about pulling crawler harnesses, 
please leave them in the comment box below. If there's anything about this topic that I've missed, leave your questions, leave your comments in the comment box below. Please don't forget to click on subscribe. Please smash that thumbs up button. Thanks for watching another episode of Team Jesus Outdoors. God bless, tight lines. We will see you guys on the water. Thank you.